Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Shannon Matthews? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the disappearance, then offer my analysis. Shannon Matthews was born on September 9, 1998, she lived in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, England. Her mother was Karen Matthews and her father, Leon Rose. In early 2008, nine-year-old Shannon lived with her mother and her mother's 22-year-old boyfriend, Craig Meehan. Karen Matthews had a total of seven children by at least five different fathers. Four of Karen's children, including Shannon, live with her. Karen had multiple interactions with social services over concerns that she was not properly caring for her children. Karen was not employed. She was dependent on welfare. Karen's boyfriend, Craig, had a 39-year-old uncle named Michael Donovan. He also went by the name Paul Drake. He would later become an important player in this narrative. Now moving to the timeline of the disappearance. On February 19, 2008, Shannon was spotted outside of her school at about 3.10 p.m. The school was located about a mile and a half from Shannon's residence. At 6.48 p.m., her mother, Karen, called the police and said that Shannon never returned home from school. She was missing. The police initiated an extensive search, which eventually involved over 300 law enforcement officers. There had not been an investigation this large in West Yorkshire since the Yorkshire Ripper case. Despite all these efforts, the authorities could not find Shannon. The media was under pressure to cover Shannon's disappearance as extensively as they covered the Madeline McCann case from May of 2007. Even though the McCann case occurred in Portugal, she and her parents lived in England. Her family was on vacation in Portugal when she went missing. Interest in Shannon's disappearance was not as nearly as pronounced as in the case of Madeline McCann. There were many theories as to why. One possible reason was the discrepancy in social class between Karen Matthews and the parents of Madeline McCann. Karen was unemployed and on welfare. McCann's parents were physicians. Some people disapproved of Karen's lifestyle. For example, they were judgmental regarding the number of male romantic partners she had. A newspaper in England called The Sun offered a reward for anyone who supplied information that would lead to Shannon's return. Initially, the reward was £20,000, but they increased it 11 days later to £50,000. On March 14, 2008, the police found Shannon alive in the residence of Michael Donovan, the uncle of Karen's boyfriend. They had received a tip. His home was just a few miles away from where Shannon lived with her mother. Shannon was under a bed. It looked as though she was in a bed base that had been modified so it had a little hiding area in it. The police found Michael in this bed base as well. He bit a police officer as he was dragged out. In addition to this modified bed, the police found a few other interesting items in the residence. A number of sleep aids and medications, a handwritten list of rules that Shannon was supposed to follow, and a strap which was tied to a beam in the attic and fed through the ceiling. The police don't believe the strap was ever used to restrain Shannon. The police realized that the kidnapping of Shannon was perpetrated by Michael Donovan and her mother, Karen Matthews. The plan was to keep Shannon for a while as different businesses offered rewards for her safe return. When the rewards reached a sufficient level, Michael Donovan would release her at a nearby market. He would then drive around the corner and find her. After this, Michael would take her to the police station and eventually claim the reward money. He would share that money with his conspirator, Karen Matthews. Three days after the police rescued Shannon, Michael was charged with kidnapping, false imprisonment, and committing acts intended to pervert the course of justice. He attempted to bring an end to his life about three weeks later, but was unsuccessful. Karen's boyfriend, Craig, was arrested on April 2 for possessing indecent images, but the case was unrelated to the kidnapping. The police just happened to find the images on his computer when they were searching Karen's residence. Karen was arrested on April 6. 
she would eventually be charged with kidnapping, false imprisonment, child neglect, and perverting the course of justice. Craig's sister and mother were arrested as well, but they would later be released without being charged. Michael and Karen were tried in late 2008. Investigators testified that Shannon had been given multiple medications, including antidepressants and sleep aids. These were administered not only during the incident, but for up to 20 months leading up to it. This is how Karen and Michael maintained control over Shannon during the kidnapping hoax. Michael said that Karen threatened to hurt him unless he kept Shannon in his residence. She was going to send three sizable men after him to attack him if he didn't cooperate. Karen also told him that they would make money from the rewards. He said he didn't want the money. Karen had a completely different story. She said that she knew nothing about the kidnapping hoax. The problem for Karen was that she gave the police five different versions of her story. In December of 2008, Michael and Karen were found guilty of kidnapping, false imprisonment, and perverting the course of justice. In January of 2009, they were both sentenced to eight years in prison. By 2012, both of them would be out of prison. Shannon Matthews received mental health counseling after the incident. She had been suffering from nightmares. She was placed with a foster family and was given a new identity. Now moving to my analysis. There's really no question that Michael Donovan was guilty. He admitted to taking Shannon, although he tried to make it look like it was done under duress. Michael had abducted his own daughter, who was in foster care, only 15 months before the incident with Shannon. His wife described him as aggressive and violent. As far as Karen Matthews, she has always maintained her innocence, sort of. Initially, she admitted that she directed Michael to pick up Shannon from school, so she knew this whole time that there never had been a kidnapping. She denied this was part of a hoax, rather it was part of a scheme for her to leave Craig, like she was preparing to move and she needed somebody to watch Shannon as she did this. If this was true, why did Karen report her daughter missing? And once she was reported missing, and the whole country knew about it, why did Michael not call the police? If he was really afraid of Karen, this was his big chance to get police protection. Right after Shannon Matthews was reported missing, the police suspected Karen Matthews was involved. She demonstrated a lot of unusual behavior. A few examples, a family liaison officer visited Karen's residence and noticed that Karen and Craig were playing on an Xbox. Karen barely even looked up at the officer. When Karen was away from the cameras, she acted like she did not have a care in the world. But in front of the cameras, she appeared to be upset. The police told Karen not to talk to the press because it could endanger Shannon's life. Karen spoke to the press anyway. A local supermarket allowed Karen and Craig to come into the store and grab what they needed. They filled one cart with groceries and another cart with beer. And of course, there were a number of inconsistencies in Karen's story. It seems clear that Karen was guilty. This was a conspiracy. It was not a particularly sophisticated conspiracy. It was reported that Karen has a borderline learning disability and it seems clear that Michael Donovan was far from a master criminal. There were no complex emotional motives behind this crime, like Munchausen by proxy or something like that. This was not about feeding off of attention or looking for sympathy. I think this crime was simply about the reward money. These two offenders had no idea how suspicious they were behaving during the commission of the crime, and they were oblivious to the reality that if Michael Donovan had discovered Shannon, there would have been a high level of suspicion given that he was Karen's boyfriend's uncle. This case attracted a lot of negative attention to the functioning of social services and the welfare system. Karen's residence was extremely dirty, the children were neglected, social services had investigated several times, and even briefly put one of her children in foster care. Social workers found that the children had been left alone at night and alcohol was being consumed in the house. A mental health assessment was performed on Karen Matthews. It revealed that she had an inability to put her children's welfare above her own. Despite multiple reports, social services determined that there was no risk or significant harm. They did nothing to protect Shannon or the other children. As far as the welfare system, people accused Karen Matthews of simply using her children 
as a financial resource. Karen had her first child at age 20. She had two live-in boyfriends before having two children with her fourth boyfriend, Leon Rose. One of these children was Shannon. She had a child with her fifth boyfriend. Then she had another child with a former boyfriend. She met another man and they had a child. She was pregnant with another child when she met Craig. Karen was not employed during any of this and of course collected welfare. Karen Matthews has never been charged with any type of welfare fraud, but it's easy to see why people think that she may have been at least abusing the system. Interestingly, the public perception of welfare fraud in England is quite different than the reality. One study shows that members of the public believe that 27% of welfare benefits were fraudulently claimed. The actual percentage is 0.7. Therefore, the cost of fraud is about 1 billion pounds. It's worth noting that only a small fraction of the welfare spending would be on people in a situation like Karen Matthews. As a comparison, tax evasion in England costs taxpayers 150 billion pounds a year. The case of Shannon Matthews shined the light on potential abuse of the welfare system and fed into this myth that the population receiving these benefits are involved in rampant cheating. In reality, the majority of people receiving these types of benefits need them. The poor and the disabled are overrepresented in this population. This is a vulnerable population that doesn't need prosecution, they need compassion. Wealthy tax evaders are a much more logical group to target if the government is looking to recover some lost revenue. Those are my thoughts on the case of Shannon Matthews. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.